Jim Dobson was born in Shreveport, Louisiana in 1936, the son, grandson, and great-grandson of ministers. A lot of people don't know this, but you had actually a few little rebellious years. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> my dad was gone a lot, and my mother raised me. She was a great, great mother. Like a lot of kids, when I turned 16, I began to think I knew more than she did. Mm. And uh, I had been out somewhere. I didn't do anything really bad. I won't even tell you what it is. But I came home, and she said, uh, I know where you've been. And I said, right. Mm. And I said, I'm going to do it again. Mm. And I'd never taken her on like that. Wow. And she looked at me, and she said, what did you say? My dad was a 1,000 miles away, and she called him. And it, uh, while I was standing there, she had a simple message for him. She said, I need you. And to my shock, my dad canceled a four-year slate of revival meetings, four years, and said, I'm not doing that anymore. He got on a train and he came home. That decision changed everything for the young Jimmy. And my dad, by making that sacrifice, invested in me. We hunted, we fished, he was with me. He pulled me back from the edge, Wendy. Wendy, and he, uh, and and the time I was an only child, so the time with my mother and dad was was idyllic. But the young Dobson did not follow his forefathers to the pulpit, choosing instead the path of academia, and served as a child psychologist at Children's Hospital in Los Angeles for many years. But his love for academia was overshadowed by his growing concern for the rapid demise of the family. I saw where it is now coming. With his wife Shirley and two young children, Dobson left university life in 1977 to begin a radio program on 34 Christian stations called Focus on the Family. Mr. President, thank you for coming by to see us here at Focus on the Family. Well, I am very pleased to be here. Unfortunately, it was his own family that began to suffer. I was neglecting my own family. Um, and my dad saw it. And he was on the way to Hawaii, and he wrote me a letter. And then he said, if you don't have time to invest in them and pray for them, you'll lose them. Dobson cut back on travel, and focus on the family took off. It eventually grew to 7,000 stations in 150 countries and at its peak, reached 220 million people each day. In addition to his radio show, Dobson wrote numerous bestsellers, including Dare to Discipline and What Wives Wish Their Husbands Knew About Women. He also started the Family Research Council and served as an advisor to five presidents, including Ronald Reagan. He said, uh, I want you to tell me what I can do to strengthen the family. I said, why not a Family Impact Study Commission? The, there were four of those, and he issued executive orders for all four. In 1989, Dobson shocked the nation by sitting down with serial killer Ted Bundy the day before his execution. He told Dobson violent pornography led to his unthinkable behavior. For the record, you are guilty of killing many women and girls. Is yes, that yes, that's true. After more than 30 years at Focus on the Family, Dobson left the radio show he founded. This was your baby, and in 2009, you walked away. Why? Well, uh, I frankly don't want to go far into that, but there were philosophical differences, and uh, it was obvious that... Uh, that I saw things a little differently than the person who was my successor. He began a new nationally syndicated show called Family Talk, you know but says his message hasn't changed. You cannot have a strong country without strong families. Mm. You know, that's the next generation. When you look around today and you see um, gay marriage, uh, pretty much the law of the land, and you see transgender becoming sort of the norm, uh, in terms of people being able to talk about it, do you, do you ever get discouraged? 
Of course I do, because the family is the ground floor. That's the foundation for the entire culture. Wendy, I mean, everything sits on that. Is it a good likeness? At 81, Dobson says he has no plans to retire. He starts each day with 45 minutes on the treadmill before coming here to his office that looks more like a ski chalet, adorned with rustic furniture, family photos, and a majestic view of Pikes Peak. And like Pikes Peak, which towers more than 14,000 feet above Colorado Springs, Dobson says one thing remains paramount over all else, teaching your children to love the Lord. There's nothing more important than introducing them to Jesus Christ. So to have an opportunity to influence those individual families is a great thrill for me. Wendy Griffith, CBN News, Colorado Springs.